Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and this is the Sunday subscriber video. I'm going to be putting up photos at the end of this that I took during the week and I had a subscriber also send me some photos, which I really appreciate. If you would send me photos from your yard or something you're, you've seen that you're impressed with or flowering or whatever, maybe there's a plant you'd like to have ID'd, just send that to me and send it to this email address and I'll put it in the Sunday subscriber videos. I got a question uh, last week on my video from last week about closing my nursery, about whether or not I would uh, recommend somebody start a nursery now. It's a very interesting question because uh, like I talked about in that video, it can be personally taxing, especially as a small nursery because you're gonna be responsible seven days a week for your plants. Larger nurseries have, you know, their staff will rotate weekends, you know, to monitor how the watering is going. You can't really put these plants on automated irrigation. You can put them on automated irrigation, but you still need somebody to go in and monitor it. All kinds of problems happen. These are large pumps and they can cause serious problems. I actually had to beg someone to open their store on the 4th of July one year uh, to get a part because I had a busted pipe on the 4th of July. So these kinds of things happen, but that's okay because it's actually a very rewarding business and it's amazing to take a little cutting off a plant and turn it into a finished product and sell it to a customer. You learn stuff every day. I think it, the rewarding part of it outweighs the work part of it. Um, so that's great. The problem now actually is how are you going to market them? And the box store model, which is great, I'm not knocking box stores in any way, the box stores over the last 20, 25 years definitely stepped into this niche in a big way and uh, then honestly do a great job at it. But they have definitely upset how everything worked before that. You know, how nurseries sold plants, where they sold them, the locations of their nurseries became really important. Uh, I happen to live 20 minutes from Raleigh and Raleigh, North Carolina is Boomtown, USA for any of those who know. You know, there's a handful of southern cities that are just absolutely exploding for the last 30 or 40 years, and Raleigh happens to be one of those places. So the nurseries that are in my area uh, still have outlets. Uh, a lot of the garden centers have survived in my community, um, despite the box stores, you know, just you know, growing from the ground everywhere. A lot of, most of them have survived, and so that's there. Plus, because we have so much construction going on, the landscapers have thrived more probably in our area than some areas in the country. So that's been beneficial. And honestly, regulation has been beneficial uh, to the nursery business because the new construction that is taking place in this country requires a certain amount of trees per parking place and a certain amount of plants per amount of parking places that you have. They require less and less water running off the property. So those things have to be controlled and there have, we have to have plants that will take wet feet in order to try to get this water to soak into the ground. So there's regulation has been beneficial to our business as well. And, but like I say, I'm in an area where all of those things have kind of come together. So I was okay doing this. So that's the question you're gonna to have to ask yourself. If you're ask, asking yourself, should I start a nursery? Should I start growing plants? You're going to need to think about what your outlet for those plants is going to be before you get started. Some things you're going to grow are going to take two to three years to finish, and you kind of want to know where you might be taking those items. It's not to say your business model won't change in the future, but you either need to be close to a city where landscapers are in play, or you need to have a retail outlet. My entire model has been based on selling plants to the end user, to homeowners and I get a little more than wholesale and they play a little less than retail and we both kind of win a little bit. So that has actually been beneficial, but it also leaves me as a retailer answering lots and lots and lots of questions for people and that can be demanding. So what I want you to get from this is to definitely think through what your market's going to be. You know, are you near a growing area? Um, that would be, the, that if you can check that off your list, you can probably wing the rest of it, honestly. If you're near an area where people are trying to abandon the space and move south or move to some other outlying area, it's definitely going to be more difficult. You're definitely going to be shipping plants. Um, maybe there's a state farmer's market. I actually sell it at a state farmer's market uh, near me or some sort of farmer's market. Go and check those things out. Do as much research as you can on what might be the best strategy for selling your plants after you've grown them before you start growing them. 
that's the best piece of advice I can give you. So anyway, here's the Sunday subscriber pictures. Thanks for watching.